Good day people and welcome back to the channel. Today I bring you something that we've had for a while and it just never has come to fruition of us making a video for it or releasing it but we're going to put something out there. So today is a simple setup for heat and what heat does it allows users to click on your stream and allow things to happen. So in my basic setup we're using stream button and all that and we'll show you how to set it up but what you'll need to do first is to get it installed. So here's what you need to do. So you need to go over into your Twitch dashboard and go down to extensions and you can you'll search for heat and it's this one. You'll recognize it by this like orangey tear drop sort of shape. And then what you do when you go into my extensions, you add it as, a, as an overlay. So for me it's overlay one and it's activated. Push, done, done. Next thing I did was I went to OBS and I've created a scene. This is just test. You could do it. We've got text box green, text green, text red, and we've got a box. This box has two filters on it. It has a red color correction and a green color correction. So that's all this has. So I've installed heat on, on the Twitch uh, dashboard and I've got a, an OBS source what I want to use. So let's go over Streamerbot. Here is Streamerbot. And when you import the code, You'll, I'm going to share everything that I've got here, these six actions. What you'll get is um, some code here. All you need to do with this is make sure it compiles. What you'll need is system.drawing and system.globalization. What it says up here. You may need, if you're using 1.8, you may need Newton Soft, but I'm not 100% sure. But obviously, this is being built on 1.7. Because at the moment 1.8 isn't out, but it's close. So you just make, make sure all your codes compile. So you may need Newton soft, you may not, but you'll need system.drawing, system.globalization. Next is a code here, and I think this just compiles normally, it does. I think this one's the same. Yep. And if they don't compile, check the Discord and we'll help you get the right references. And then after that, it's done. So the README tells you how to pretty much set it up. So once you've got it in your dashboard and all that, um, from the extension of Surge at the start, there's a, there's, a, there's a web here. So I'm just going to grab mine. Actually, I want to set it up. I don't need to do that. So what you do, you go to server.client, slash clients, and you do a WebSocket client, and you type in this Earl. So it's WSS colon forward slash forward heat API dot J38 dot net dot forward slash channel forward and then after this forward the last forward you put your ID. It'll tell you ID if you don't know your ID you can find it simply with Streamerbot by going over to viewers and then clicking your name. Viewers is there. So if I put me, me on, on me, there's my ID. 601 save. Anyway, that's where it is. The next thing you should do is for heat message, is you're going to tie that to message there. And then just connect. You can have all connect on and it should be connected. So how does it work? Well, if we open up our OBS again, I'm sure but you can see I have two commands, two um, text sources. These are what you're going to be clicking. So if I go to actions, you can see in heat map actions, what I have is one called green, one called red. So what you need to do is call the, the action you want to happen when you click a, the source, the same as the, you know, the source and the action have to call, be called the same. So as you can see, I've got green in all capitals, but red in all capitals. So that's why I have a green and a red in all capitals actions. Then in the sources, as you see, I've set up. Well, we've got a folder called green. This don't need to be the same. But folder called red. This don't need to be the same. It just so way of identifying it. Then what we do is we get the scene item properties using this selection, and we point it to the green. So this is going to get all the information for green. This is going to get all the information for red. And work out what's clicked, and then do that. So it does the mouse location logic math for you all works out 
So, that is it set up. If you've done all this, it should work. So what we're going to do is we're going to start streaming with this account because you can only test it when you're live. So give that a few seconds to boot up. So what we before I do that, all these do is it turns it green, waits a second, turns turns it off the green, and then it'll post and chat who's done it. One thing I I will mention that if for whatever reason it comes up user has pressed so if I press this it's come up Terry Darts press red. But if, if that comes up as like a blank variable, so percent user percent, it's because they haven't authorized it. So what your chat needs to do is press on this heat map, you see how this heats here. You do manage access and then you accept. Or access, I can't remember what it says exactly, but you need to accept it. And that's how you do that. But as you can see, if I press green, it's going to tell me I press green and it's going to turn it green and turn it off. If I click anywhere else, it won't do no. It won't do no at all. I click anywhere and it just won't do no. So it won't register then clicks for a source. And that's it up. So, that is pretty much the setup of Heat. It's very simple and very easy. So now you've set up, you can do what you want with it. Um, there's so many different ideas of how you can use it. I had it working with Live's Towerbot game that he has on his stream. I had it working with Hangman. I've had it working with Pokemon, so I've used it to so press buttons. I know Gammon had it working with Prey, the game, so you press on the screen and you press A and then it'd be like a key press, so you can literally just play the game. So there's many possibilities with it. I do shout out because it can get variables. It can, if it, as long as it's accepted, it can get the user. So you can do things that way. I know people are as counters clicking and counting up thing. There's a lot you can do with it. It's really good tool, but that's just a basic setup. One thing to note, remember, is that the scene, the source name, has to be the same as the action. So they have to match. I think. In terms of groups, I'm not sure how well it works with groups, so be careful. And if scenes are on top of each other, it works out which one's on top. So if you, so as you can see, if I quickly switch back to display, as you can see here, that green is on top. So if this one top of here, it would press the green one over the red if I pressed where they overlap. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out. And yeah, that's it. It's a really cool, hopefully this is a quick one and you get installed. But yeah, stay tuned for more videos like this and I'll see you all next time.